today about trekking poles. I've had a few people ask me why I use trekking poles and what's the right way to use them. So I use trekking poles for a couple of different reasons. Uh, they're easier on my knees and my ankles. When I'm going downhill, I can use them to kind of give me a little bit of something to hold on to when I'm stepping down. A lot of times you don't have a tree right there next to the, to the trail. So you know, if you have a tree, you hold onto the tree and you step down. It makes it a little bit easier for that step down. Uh, some of them are not just like gradual little incre or decreases. You have to actually step down. So that helps a little bit. Uh, when I'm going uphill, it helps a little bit. When uh, it just gives me some extra leverage to help pull myself up a little bit. If I'm walking on a flat trail, I don't really tend to use them as much. I'll just kind of hold them off to the side. Um, until I need them again. My backpack does actually have a place on the side where I can strap them if I'm going to have like a long stretch of flat so I don't have to really worry about uh, holding them if I don't want to. Another reason that I personally use them is my hands swell a lot. So especially in the hot weather. It doesn't happen as much in cold weather but hot weather my hands really really swell when I'm hiking. I'm not sure why it just that's just what happens and from things that I've read and watched and listened to a lot of people tend to have that issue so um, when I'm when I'm walking they have straps that you you know you can slide your hand in here and you're gripping this pole and I think what really kind of happens is it just kind of keeps circulation moving a little bit and it doesn't tend you know if you're walking and you've just got your hand down to the side you're all that's just you know it's just flowing down but if you're holding your pole then it it your hand is up and you're kind of gripping this um, handle so let's talk about the poles themselves I have a couple of different kinds that I have used in the past the very first one I ever got was really just a really cheap set from Walmart they were only $20 and they are slides so they actually twist and they're adjustable. Um, most trekking poles are adjustable. So you can adjust them for the height um, for you. I am 5'6". Um, so, you know, you're taller, you're shorter. What works for me is not going to work for you. So these are really nice to be able to personalize. Um, most trekking poles will have a spot that says stop so that you don't overextend your pole. Uh, that's kind of what happened why I retired this set is my granddaughter got a hold of them, played with them, and overextended them so they don't really lock into place very well anymore. So, uh, you know, I just, I got me another set. But all trekking poles have a couple of different features. On the end, you'll see the point. Um, they all come with the little things that you put over top of them that you can use for, it's used for different terrain. So you've got this that's used for mud, you've got a really wide one that's used for snow, so, you know, all of them you can utilize for different kinds of um, terrain and depending on where you are, where, you know, when you're hitting rock, you don't want the same thing as when you're hitting mud. So, this was my very first set. This was um, an out, it's called Outdoor Products. Like I said, I got them from Walmart, 20 bucks, wanted to try them out. They have a rubber grip um, and I didn't really care for the rubber grip as much. I sent a tend to wore blisters on my hands. Um, with that rubber grip. A lot of people like it. I personally didn't care for it. So when it was time to get a different set, I had seen a lot about the flip lock. So the flip lock, instead of twisting it and pulling it, 
you've got the flip lock that locks into place. So you, know, you slide them to whatever adjustment you want, lock them down into place, and all the flip locks have like a set screw type thing so that it makes it easier to open and close. And then once you get it to the height that you want, you kind of tighten it down. And once it gets to the, it needs to be not super hard. You don't need to force it. You just need to be able to snap it into place and that locks it. Um, I have, my new set is called Trail Buddies. Um, I actually got these off of Amazon. And they have a bunch of different colors and I'm, I like a bunch of different colors. So I went with the teal, but they have yellow, red, purple, dark blue, black, white. Um, you can get a bunch of different colors to suit whatever your personality is. Something else that I really like about these is they have a cork handle, which tends to absorb more sweat. Um, and it just seems to be a little bit easier on my hands. Um, it doesn't, it's not really cushioned, but I think it's a little bit more um, soft than the rubber grip. So that is, you know, really the couple kinds. There is one other kind that I've seen. I don't have an example of it, but if you think about a tent pole and how you can just pull the tent pole apart, and collapse it on itself. There are trekking poles like that. Um, I don't know how sturdy they are. I don't know how great they work. I've never tried to use those. So um, if you use those, please give me a comment and tell me how you like those and uh, why you like those so that maybe I can go out and get me a set and I'll try those too. But when you're utilizing trekking poles, what you want to do is you want your hand, your arm at a 90 degree angle. So if I have it right there, you see, this is just way, it's weird and awkward. Nobody walks with their arms like that. You want to do it where your, your, your elbow is at a 90 degree angle. So once you kind of get it there and it's comfortable, then you lock your pole into place and you're ready to go. Now, what you can also do is when you go are going up an incline, if it's fairly steep, you can actually shorten your pole to make it easier. You don't need a big long pole. You know, if you're if you're going up a steep incline, you don't want to do like this. You want it shorter so that you can help your yourself up with with your pole as leverage. If you're going downhill, you can lengthen the pole so that you can set it and then help yourself step down, um, utilizing this for your leverage on both ways. Like I said, when I'm going on flat ground, I really don't use my trekking poles. I just tend to kind of hold them to the side. Now, Billy, on the other hand, likes a walking stick. He tried the trekking poles. He just did not like them. Um, he tends to use a walking stick. And this is Billy's walking stick. So it is um, hand carved, handmade. Um, he has the strap. It's not quite as fancy as, as some of the others. It's not cushioned. It's just a piece of like little rawhide. Um, you notice he doesn't have any kind of grip or anything like that. So he can just move, move his hands up and down wherever he wants to. And he really likes it. So um, something that he's done to personalize his stick is he's gone through and actually carved notches for the so far the three hikes that he's gone on with me. Uh, the first real hike that he did with me was in... Um, Tennessee in the Smokies from uh, the, uh, he did the Illum Cave uh, Bluffs Trail with me. So uh, we hiked there. So he's written that down and he did like a seven and a half mile from Neal's Gap to Hogpen Gap on the Appalachian Trail. And then most recently we did an overnight on a local trail here in Alabama in Sylacauga and that's called Silo Ward Trail. Um, that's a mountain bike trail trail and a hiking trail so that's his walking stick I do have a walking stick as well it's not something that I use when I'm on the trail but I do want to tell you about my walking stick just because it it is super special to me had a gentleman that used to work with me and uh, he knew how much I really enjoyed hiking and and all that kind of fun stuff and he also enjoyed walking through the woods and when he would walk through the woods he said that certain limbs or sticks would talk to him and no it's not weird the trees weren't talking to him but he said you know a lot of times he would be walking by and he'd see a beautiful limb laying there and it would just say hey I need to be a walking stick so when he found out that 
I love to hike. He came in not long after and he brought me my very own hand carved walking stick. Um, he found it, he, he carved it, he stained it, um, he put the, the strap on for me. Uh, and since I really don't use a walking stick, what I have done um, is I went through and in the Smokies, you can get these little medallions for the different trails that they have up there. So I thought a really neat thing is as I was hiking these different trails to get these medallions and when I got the stick, it was the perfect place to kind of showcase the medallions. So I have one for um, Laurel Falls, which is just a really short hike up in um, Gatlinburg area. It's probably one of the most popular trails you're going to find. It's a paved path up to a waterfall that's very beautiful. Um, don't go... On the, definitely don't go on the weekends because it is so crowded you can't hardly walk up the path, let alone get a good view of the falls. Um, I also have done Abrams Falls, which is out of Cades Cove, which is another absolutely beautiful waterfall. I've done the Gatlinburg Trail, which is just a little four-mile um, hike right outside of Gatlinburg over to Sugarland Visitor Center. I've done the entire Cades Cove Loop. The Cades Cove Loop is 11 miles. And on Wednesdays during certain months of the year, they close the cove to all motor traffic. So if you ride a bike or you want to hike, you can do that without worrying about all of the different vehicles that may be coming around or people not paying attention to you. And um, it took me all day, but I did do the entire loop um, hiking it. Saw some wildlife. It was really fun. Um, I did the Illume Cave. That's this, this medallion here. And then this was my big um, bucket list at the point at that point was Mount Lacan. So I got to hike up um, a loom cave all the way up to Lacan to the lodge um, and hung out for a little while. It was very cold. It was in November and it was the trail was icy and it was but it was so much fun. Uh, and then the the one that I have up here at the top is the Appalachian Trail. Uh, no, I am not a through hiker. It is my goal. To through hike I have done a couple of little section hikes so I went ahead and I did put it on here just because that is my ultimate goal is to through hike the AT so I hope I have given you a little bit of information on trekking poles how to use them why I use them I want you to get out there and try them for yourself take a hike take a few hikes um, kind of like my shirt says take a hike get out there try it with a pole try it without and see just where your comfort level is. Until next time, get out there and live a great story.